Welcome back to understanding more about creative driver styles. This part two video, we will look specifically at four actual styles that will give you a greater insight into your own drivers of where your work comes from and being able to tap into that energy because maybe you know, but the energy is not always available to you. So being able to focus your thoughts on where you're coming from really helps. Secondly, it could help you if you already know what your muse is, but you're wanting to uh, enter competitions and understand the judges, talk to gallery owners and understand where they're coming from. So understanding these different styles could really help your communication your confidence dealing with others and their confidence dealing with you because you speak their language. And thirdly, it could help you just choose what art to adorn your home with. What is something that really expresses who you are? Something that is going to have the right impact on you when it's in your home. Because sometimes I hear people talk about such broad, different things. Well, if you understand what your drivers are, it might help you get that much more homogenous uh, choice that really has a cohesive message and resonates with who you are. So let's dive straight in now to the four styles. Now you remember last week I talked about the axes from spontaneous to controlling that's spontaneous, those who express feelings, right? They're very open about feelings and that's what's really driving and important to them. At the other end of that continuum, controlling, and that meant people who are into ideas and things, that's what excites them, that's what really stimulates them. So this is a continuum and we're all going to sit somewhere on that continuum. In the third video, I will explain how we might shift between these quadrants and the different artists we know that might fit into them and how it would help us read things even more in our art world and generally all of our world. So the other parameter was between tell and ask. So those who want to tell a message to get something really important across that they believe in. Um, there's an opinion there in their work. When I'm doing the uh, portrait series about leading women, it's because I really want to create those conversations about uh, one, applauding those women who have made it to leadership roles, but asking all of us, how can we make it easier for more young women to be able to get to those leadership roles. So I've really got something to say. But some work is more conscious about expressing and telling ideas and it is asking you, what do you think? And we've all encountered those artists who say, oh no, you just, you know, don't ask me what it is. It's about your interpretation and your interaction with the work that's really a driver and important to them. So let's take a look at these four quadrants that those parameters create. I want to start first by reminding you that this is not like a psychometric analysis uh, that's really specific boxes. This is all about um, a broad brushstroke approach to understanding those thinking styles and um, we're going to start here between spontaneous and uh, the tell message, the more controlling message with the visionary. You recognize this person because they are showing you the vision, the big picture, how it's going to look, how it's going to be the biggest, the first. They are going to excite you about the vision. Details, not so much. <laughs> Oops. 
you might recognize this person because they may speak quickly they may be loud in how they speak they're probably entrepreneurial they're prepared to start a business they're not afraid of risk risk is okay and um, they're a lateral thinker but there could be a certain amount of ego and image involved in what they're doing you know at your extreme end here think of Christos wrapping up all of the buildings uh, people that have big visions think of Graham Stevens our very own Graham Stevens from Color in Your Life who had a vision of creating an archive of the minds of artists to share all over the world and he's done it and not only that but those videos from those artists are also going to the moon that's a vision <laughs> all right so big picture but not so much detail so think as I talk these through of yourself people you know people at home people you work with and where would they fit in the ones that have the great ideas but not necessarily all of the details but they can use their energy to bring everybody else along and it could be that you can see that in their artwork as well so from that visionary here in expressive and feelings let's go the other side of that to the person who shares their feelings but is cautious about pushing an opinion and I'm going to call this the amicable you recognize this person because they love to chat they love meetings rapport is really important you cannot push them for a decision or consensus they will do it in their own time they have what seems like a more casual approach but consensus is very important if you are preparing an exhibition with someone like this they want to check that everybody is on board everyone's being brought along in the process because that rapport and things about people are really important you might actually just see a lot of people in their work because it's the people and their emotions that are is what's driving them and they need to know about your emotions they want lots of brief background and lots of detail so what does that mean they're the person that asks you all about your weekend all about your family where you've come from where you studied what you're doing they need that information in order to be comfortable with you establish rapport with you and be able to move forward working with you so um, that they're not that the if you push them for a decision or urgency that won't work with them they can't operate in that environment so you may recognize them too because of the inflection in the way they speak uh, do you like that the upward inflection this may tell you that you're dealing with somebody who is the amicable maybe you're going to visit a gallery and the person at the desk is engaging you with conversation asking you lots of questions and you're nervous about speaking to the director and so you don't maybe take too much notice of that that person needs to engage with you that way and it's very important to stop and take the time to interact with them and create that rapport because also of course they talk to the director about what you are like <laughs> so it's uh, well when I show you the next style you'll understand why it's important to know the difference but this is the person that loves meetings if you can see their desk where they work there's probably lots of photos of all their family of their puppy their cat uh, they want to interact with you on that level about all of those things that they love they share their love they share their emotion so that's the amicable and here between tell and controlling is 
the direct driver. You might recognize them because they say, yeah, 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 just get to the point, what do you want? <laughs> They're bottom line focused. They are time focused. They don't mind risk, but they want to know what you want. So when you interact with this person, you make your recommendation first. I'm talking to you about, I want to talk to you about this big painting that you said you liked, right? And you purchasing it and having it on your wall up front. You're going to need to be upfront if that's who you're dealing with. Because if you're an amicable and you want to talk to them about what it means and how you made it and who is there, this person is about to explode while you talk that way. They'll just be like, hey, you know, what do you actually want? Because their brain goes to the bottom line and then they can work back and work out if they've got enough time and uh, can they fit this in in their priorities because that's how their brain works. So what can happen when you get these two people, if this one feels nervous because this person can be intimidating, they will talk more. <laughs> and what does that do? That makes this one even more, oh my God, would you just stop? Which means I can't hear anymore. Okay, and this one is now just talking longer and longer because in their mind, they're thinking, oh, if you only understand, I'll give you more information and then you'll understand and then you'll be comfortable because that's what makes them comfortable. So you see how we tend to function out of our own driver and not understand why all the rest of the world isn't thinking like us. Right, ring a bell, it's human nature. <laughs> but if you wanna take a moment to step back as we're doing with this opportunity to think about creative drivers, then maybe you can think about, is this where I want to be? During the week, you might've seen in the comments about the first video, uh, Gordon was talking about he felt that he could see where he sits in terms of creating his own work and maybe that means he should try creating from a different quadrant. So that could be what interests or sparks you out of getting deeper insight yourself into how to deal with others. But keep all these thoughts in mind so this is a video you can come back to when you've got a really important meeting and you want to prepare really well. Now let's go to this last quadrant here. Um, this one is the analytical. They want to know you've done the work, every step of the process and you're going to hear this person say, yeah, 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 let's just go back a few steps, All right? Because they want to know where you're coming from and that everything fits together. They want options. They want choices to ensure that everything is going to fit together and uh, they're analyzing how it all works. So, they follow a process of reason. The process is important to them. You've got to show that you've done the work. They don't want risk. So when you explain what you're going to do, maybe you're talking about pulling an exhibition to together with others. If you're going to explain all the steps that you have spoken to everyone, you've already told them what's involved, they've all agreed thus far to these particular steps, now we're at this step. If you show a continuum to this person where all the steps are and show you've thought it through and done the work, then they'll be confident with you and they'll engage with you. I, I dealt years ago with um, I was actually teaching this kind of model to some MBA students 
and one of the students then gave us his presentation that he was going to give at work about them moving locations. So whether you're an artist or whatever you do, this is just as relevant. Now, the, in this presentation, what he did was say, right, I've had a look at the demographic of our customers, where they are, and I've looked at the demographic of all of the staff. And so I can see what kind of location, this was in Sydney, would be a best fit for us. Then I looked at our growth trajectory of the business and the, the size of office and number of staff uh, and all the things we need. We need a big um, uh, gate for the trucks to come in and out. And so the location had to have all of those things. And then he shows you he's got a map with everything pinned out and St. Leonard's is the right location, and then goes through all the steps of the light, what's in the office, there's 70% um, calculation of room for growth over the next five years, it would we'd be able to expand and still be in that office, and I also have the key, so we can go and have a look now, and if you make a decision today, we can get naming rights on the building. And basically, we all sat there and he had us all the way along. He told us he had thought through everything. He'd thought through all the things that could go wrong. And so we trusted him. And he was going to be presenting that to his CEO and chief financial officer who were both very analytical thinkers. So that was an analytical approach as opposed to if his, uh, the people he'd been talking to were very direct, instead of at the end getting to St. Leonard's and what the benefit for making a decision now is, then you would start with that at the beginning. If you were talking to the amicable, you would just be talking about what drew you to this, what are your values, what do you share in common to help them trust you and work with you, or to the visionary, what's the big picture of what you're trying to create. So it's important for us to know where we sit in these things, but also so important for the success of our communication for us to understand who it is we're talking to. So your work will help you see, um, you know, where I said, where I've done um, big portrait exhibitions, I've, I've had a vision, you know, when, when I, I didn't paint one painting of an Aboriginal Australian and stop there, I had a vision of how portraits can actually lift people, um, honour them, and also how they get people talking, because we're humans. We love pictures of people, because we're people, and we relate to that, and we're attracted to that. So it's the vision of the portraits and how to use them to tell a whole message that drives me, so I'd be over here. and. It could be something quite different for why are you painting what you're painting or attracted to the type of work that you are attracted to. So what I'm going to do in our third video, the third session, is talk through how uh, you might move through different stages in your career. You might uh, be in different situations because of time pressures or because of um, finances. These could push you different ways. And I just want to give you that extra step for us to be able to also look at some specific artists and think, hmm, where would we put them in these quadrants to get a deeper understanding of creative driver style that help us, give us the insight into hooking into that energy anytime you feel a bit lost or unmotivated, if you've articulated what your drivers are, we know from research that that is going to help you focus on them and use them to your advantage. So join me for video three. Thank you so much for just having a quick look at these broad brushstroke approach to the different styles that might be in you and might be in the people around you.